Hey everyone, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. This is now part 5 of my Hasbro X-Wing conversion. Alright guys, well before we start here, I just wanted to give you a brief update. Uh, I didn't do much more than what you saw in the last video. I did use the Tamiya weathering kit to add some brown accents that you see here and along this aft section. Also did something similar to the bottom half of the ship as well. So in this video what we're going to do is concentrate on the internal wiring, uh, installation of the switches, and then we'll finally move on to the cockpit and then we will put the entire ship together. So let's go ahead and push forward. Okay, well, it's time to build out our battery compartment. Keep in mind, as you scratch build these things, they don't have to be pretty, just functional. So what I did here was I'm, first of all, using a couple different materials. One is a 1.0 millimeter thickness styrene sheet. And then I'm using these strips here that you can get from Evergreen Scale Models. Uh, these are the measurements here for the strips. You can see they're rectangular in shape, according to that schematic there. And they measure 1.5 by 2.0 millimeters. Our base here measures 5.8 by 4.0, and um, the side walls here are going to measure 5.8 by 1.8, all in millimeters now. And um, so essentially this is the way it's going to work. Uh, we have these strips here, they're going to function as braces for our walls here. And um, it's also going to function as a little ledge here, so that way when our battery is sitting in its compartment, and say the X-Wing tilts forward, it's not going to easily slide out. All right, so the plan is then to install both of the side sections here, as well as a rear section and eventually a top cover. And this is all going to install towards the rear of the X-Wing. So let me just show you how this is going to work. Uh, it's going to be in the center here. As you know, we have this open compartment here to allow us access to all of this. And um, so the battery is going to sit in the center there. And I'm going to install this by using the glue that we've been working with all along. But in addition to that, I'm going to use hot glue to also add a little bit more stability. And um, our compartment, as you see, is open right now, but I'm going to create a panel that's going to be removable so that we can uh, have access to the battery. As for the switches, I think I've decided to go ahead and drill holes into the sides here because this will be hidden by this engine piece. And uh, we're going to have two switches, one to um, turn on the anterior lights, the other one the engines, and that way you can light them individually. All right, so let's go ahead and put this together. All right, well, I need to make one correction here. As you know, I intended to install a cover like this that spanned from one edge to the other. However, you can't do that because when you install your battery or when you're trying to slide in a battery and it's going to come in at this angle, um, it's going to hit the cover. All right, so you have to leave this front area open. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can just cut the length of the cover so that it just spans the back. But what I decided to do was just to install this um, strip right here that's going to go along the back edge of the battery. And uh, that's going to give us some reassurance that the battery won't easily slide out of its compartment there if the X-Wing were to tip. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is I did make this a snug fit. So as you slide in the battery, uh, the fact that it's a little tight there keeps the battery in place as well. But this, again, will just provide us some reassurance. All right, well, since I last recorded, I did push ahead and do a few more things here. So let me just start, first of all, with the compartment cover. This is going to allow us access now to the battery. So to make this, I just used 1.0 millimeter thickness styrene. I made a partial cut, and that allowed me to make the piece bendable so we can have the same contour as this angled area here. Now, uh, let me go ahead and lift this away. And uh, so what I did to uh, make the piece uh, sturdy is to then apply glue along the cut on this side. Remember, it didn't cut all the way through. But I also um, glued on a piece of uh, thin styrene here to give it more support. And then finally added more glue on this side. So basically it's now you know, stuck in this position. The other thing I did now is I installed these neodymium magnets. Uh, these are the um, 12 millimeter by 3 millimeter magnets. And uh, they were placed inside the plastic here and glued in place with super glue. 
And then I just added the exterior detailing here using strips of styrene, and then I weathered it. In order for this to stay in place, uh, there has to be some metal pieces, or you can certainly mount magnets here, but the metal was enough. Um, all I did was I took strips of sheet metal and uh, just cut some strips here and glued it into place with some metal uh, glue, basically glue made for metal pieces, and uh, allowed it to dry, and it's uh, nice and tight in there. And then that gives us the uh, surface to which the magnets will be attracted to, and uh, then it slides into place like so. Okay, and then the next thing was to work on the switches. Uh, I went ahead, by the way, and um, glued into place the battery compartment, and I just used uh, both the two-part glue that we've been using along with a bunch of hot glue, so it's not going anywhere. So opening up the compartment allows us access to slide in and out the battery. Next are the switches, and uh, this again is a double switch that hooks into one 9-volt power source. Um, one switch is going to switch on the engines, while the other one will be wired to the anterior wing lights. So all I did was I drilled holes to accommodate the front section of the switch, and that's this section here, all right, the larger of the two circles there, and uh, drilled it, drilled a small hole, and then I actually used just a uh, a cutting tool on my Dremel there just to make the hole larger, and I just gradually did that so that I could get the hole to match the size of the outer circle there, and it just snaps into place just as planned. So to install and uh, keep the lights in place there, or light switches in place, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to first secure it in with hot glue, and then I'm going to use this epoxy putty. This is a two-part putty, much like what I used on the Stormtrooper um, customization there. Uh, but this stuff is, um, is something that actually stays a little softer. It actually stays softer a little longer than the other epoxy that I bought at Ace Hardware. Both would work, um, but a friend of mine um, had some of this in his uh, model toolbox and suggested I try it. And I think it's a great idea. I actually tried some of it here and you can see it's hardened very well. So that's going to adhere pretty nicely to this surface. And what we want is good adherence so that when we press against the switches, um, you know, they won't dislodge. And the switches then have been concealed here on the sides, just like I had planned. And so they're kind of hidden away and you're not going to see them as easily. So uh, the next step then will be to uh, put the hot glue and then the putty. Alright guys, and uh, this is now how the light switches are looking. You can see that the modeling compound, that epoxy sculpt putty, uh, has dried nice and solid, so the switches aren't going anywhere. Uh, again, the switch that I purchased for this was bought off of uh, modeltrainsoftware.com. I get a lot of my electronic switches and components there, and uh, so it's essentially a 9 volt uh, that's hooked up to two switches, and uh, so if you have two light switches that you want to be able to uh, turn on individually, this is one way to go. Okay guys, well I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. I did say I was not going to create an interior to the cockpit, but it's so tempting I thought I would just see what happens here. So uh, much like I did with the X-Wing uh, panels for the exterior, I have created some templates now for the interior. This represents the top side of the instrument panel. And this is where the gauges would be facing the pilot. And then this is the back side along which the seat would rest. And then this upper, or at least this represents the upper section here uh, towards that back window. Uh, as for the seat, I found this on eBay. This is a 1 1 18th scale seat that goes to some G.I. Joe toy. The reason I chose that is because we're using approximately about a 3 inch figure. And uh, that, an action figure of that size is about 1 1 18th scale. So that's what I got. I got this pretty cheap off of eBay. And um, when I placed it inside the cockpit, it seems to be the appropriate size. Okay, guys. Well, this is how it's coming along. I think this may work after all. This is the back piece here now. And uh, you can see I've glued them together. Um, added some additional styrene here along the back so that uh, it would be an adhesion point for this piece so we can attach it to the back wall of the or the back section of the cockpit. Also added some surface detailing here using some odds and ends. I never throw anything out. Um, 
I just uh, keep them in a parts drawer, so I just pull some stuff out, and uh, along with my styrene rods and strips here, I've been able to add this detailing. Uh, this front section was cut out here to accommodate uh, this protrusion here on the back side of our seat. We have another one here on the front, so I had to cut this out to accommodate that as well. And what I'm in the process of doing now is I've masked off this area here so that we can create this gray paneling here. I'm going to go ahead and airbrush that. As I showed you earlier, I had this masked off to be painted, and so I went ahead and used a darker gray to paint this design here. And uh, that's supposed to duplicate uh, what you see in the cockpit here. Okay, and then I used some uh, pinstriping I had. I have some light gray pinstripes and some black ones to create the um, detail that you see here. So what's next is I want to go ahead and detail the instrumentation panel. And um, I decided to try this out. So I actually have this decal sheet from the flying sub. This is a, the Mobius uh, larger scale flying sub. And uh, I never ended up using, I used only some of the decals that came with the sheet. I did not end up using the ones for the instrumentation panels. And um, so I just kept them on hand. I never throw anything away, as I've said it. And um, so what I decided to do is to scan this. Uh, and instead of using this color, I decided to make them black and white. Um, and it just so happens this actually will fit right here. So um, I'm not... Uh, well, like I said, I'm fairly new at making decals, and uh, so I just bought this decal paper uh, off of uh, eBay, and then I coated it with a decal bonder, and uh, I'm ha I have one soaking right now. Let's just see how it works out. All right, guys, and here we now have the finished instrument panel, and I have to say it's looking pretty good. Um, one thing I was very happy to see was the contrast that's coming through and the colors here. Um, and I think that's really due to the fact that this is now printed on a white decal paper. It's not transparent. Uh, my first experience with decals was with the Space 1999 Hawk that I built. It was a resin model. If you look back on my videos, you'll find it. And when I printed those, they looked great on paper. But as soon as I put them onto the model, uh, they looked a bit faded. Uh, but uh, someone suggested just printing them on white paper and just cutting as close to the decal as possible. And uh, this was the result here this time. The uh, front section, I added a few decals as well. So um, I think overall I'm very, very pleased with the way this is looking here. Now, some of you might ask if I could sell these decals, and, you know, I don't feel right about that. Um, I did not design these decals to begin with. Uh, again, this was the... Um, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea Flying Sub Decal, and I did get these from StarshipModeler.com, so you might want to check, and uh, there's also this website here, uh, TSDSINC.com, and it um, looks like they uh, are the ones who uh, made the decal sheets, so you might want to go online and check that out. I haven't had a chance to do that. Um, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and let this dry. I'll apply a uh, clear coat uh, to seal them in. And uh, I wanted to show you the back side now. So this is going to go against the back window. Um, I added some shading here with some pastels. And uh, we are getting very close now to putting everything together. All right, guys, well, it's now time to install the windows. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward with cutting out the clear styrene that we need for that. And uh, I'm going to glue them in place, let them dry before we start uh, moving further with the cockpit interior. And what you see here now is a template for the front window, so I'm just aligning it under our clear piece of styrene here. We're going to go ahead and cut this out. All right, well, I'm carefully trying to install the windows now. And uh, the first thing I did was I attached some panels here that are made of styrene plastic. Um, so that we can utilize our two-step two glue for these sections here. Uh, for the main window, I apply just a tiny bit of hot glue here, here, and here. I know hot glue is not ideal for this type of plastic. Uh, however, I just needed a small bit of adherence uh, in these sections because um, I'm depending on the side windows as well as the uh, instrument panel, which we're going to install here, to keep the main window in place. Okay guys, as you can see the windows are now in place, so I'm going to just let this dry. This was not the easiest thing to do, so that's why I couldn't record as I was going along here. I needed to really concentrate, but uh, essentially, uh, again, using these plastic tabs was very helpful to secure uh, the bottom section of the windows, and um, used some hot glue in conjunction with that. 
And uh, so the windows now are pretty secure and in place. So we're going to go ahead and let this dry and we'll continue to work on the instrument panel. Well, it's time now to install the cockpit interior and I'm going to begin with the back side. So uh, this section has been cut to conform to this area here. Now we have the back area here and that's going to come in at an angle just to kind of follow along the contour here of the window. Uh, not quite that steep of an angle but it's going to come in at an angle there. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and install the seat and then finally the uh, instrument panel. Okay, I've applied now our two-step glue, but I'm going to go ahead and reinforce it with hot glue all along the inside edge. Now we're gluing the chair in place, and I'm just using hot glue for that. So far it's coming along pretty well. I'm just going to give this a little bit of time to dry. Alright guys, here we now have the front instrument panel of the cockpit as you see in this picture. And this is ours here. So I have the template cut so that these areas will clear these joints. Alright, so the way it's supposed to work is we're going to slide this in. Like that. And what's nice about this plastic, it has a little bit of tension to it. It wants to push out this way, which works for us here. And uh, then I have to push on these two corners a little bit so that it uh, is a little bit of at an angle, right? Because we want to have a little of that instrument panel peek through the windows there. And then we're going to apply adhesive here, here, and here. Alright everybody, here we now have the completed cockpit and I'm very happy that I went ahead and proceeded with this. You know, I, I was not intending on doing this at the beginning as you may know, but a uh, few modelers encouraged me to move forward with it and I thought I'd give it a try and I'm very, very happy that I did. The uh, 1 1 18th seat works perfectly there and uh, the decals again doing a nice job with uh, creating an instrument panel for us to look at. Uh, again this is not screen accurate but certainly better than having dark windows or just an empty shell or, or an empty space there. Now there's one accommodation I need to make in particular with the bottom half as I test fitted the two pieces together. Let me just show you that. Now the area I'll be referring to is this section right here. When I put the two halves together that was running into this joint. And uh, if you notice, each of these joints have this angled piece of plastic there. And so I just took a saw and cut that free, opened it up, and then the two pieces fit perfectly together. Also went ahead and painted this section black because I did paint the flooring of the cockpit black. I thought it blended better with the seat. And uh, because of that, there were some areas that were this color just peeking through. So I thought it would be better if I just made that black and that uh, blends much better. All right, so here we have our X-Wing laid out. Uh, I've got the wings sitting right next to the main body here with the wires fed through. Drilled a couple of holes here just to make the feeding a little easier. Uh, a little short on wire with these, so we're going to go ahead and work with the uh, wing lights first. Uh, essentially all we got to do here now is hook all the positives together and then all the negatives together. So um, a little short on wire here, so I have to extend the wire a little bit so they can reach to the switch. And uh, then we'll hook in the engine lights uh, after that. Alright, so now we have the anterior lights ready to go. Next are the engine lights. So I'll tell you what, because of the length of this video, I'm going to go ahead and end this here, but I promise I will be posting the final reveal uh, video uh, at the same time. Uh, I just thought because of the length here, it would be best just to cut this uh, off here now, and uh, that way I can spend a little more time on showing you the completed X-Wing and uh, review a few other things. So if you have any questions about any of this that took place in this video, feel free, of course, to contact me here or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. I'll see you then in the final video, part six. Thanks again for watching. Take care.